Hello, Miss St. Germain here again. Today's video is going to be about composing and decomposing numbers and word problems. So reminder, um, we are finished, I'm working on our math videos and these objectives are kindergarten objectives. That's what I'm focusing on. Composing and decomposing certainly has lots of stuff in first grade with composing and decomposing, but these videos are gonna be very focused on kindergarten standards and objectives. Composing and decomposing is just a really fancy way of saying adding and subtracting. That's it. Don't get lost in the vocabulary. Adding and subtracting. That's what we're talking about today. Okay, so the two, there's two big standards in kindergarten that focus on composing and decomposing. The first one is that they have to be able to compose and decompose numbers up to 10. So that means the sum is up to 10 or the largest number in the subtraction is, is 10. Um, then the next one is they have to solve word problems using objects and pictures with numbers again up to 10. That's that is what they have to do. So I have a lot of kids in my class that are really ready to do much larger numbers. And that is okay. If they're ready to do larger numbers, I make sure that they understand the concept of adding and subtracting or composing. We're gonna call it composing and decomposing because that's the language we're, we have to use. I, I wanna make sure that they, could, they fully understand the concept, which is what we'll talk about today. But if your child is ready to, do, to go further than 10, Fantastic, great, do it, you're not gonna hurt them. Um, the, the key is making sure they really understand what they're doing. And we'll talk about a couple of tools that I use to make sure that they're really understanding what they're doing. Okay, remember, and I've said this before in all of my other video, all of my other math videos, kindergartners learn math in, in an order. We learn it con concrete, pictorial, abstract. We learn with objects first, then we learn with pictures, then we use abstract like numbers or symbols. Okay, so that is the order we have to go in to understand the concept. So when I say I have kids who come in doing this, I have kids that come in doing this and really understanding it, but I have to make sure that they're they're fully, fully understanding what seven plus eight equals. They might be able to spout off a whole bunch of number sentences or fat, you know, fact families or, or number facts. I, that's fantastic if they have that and they can do it. But a lot of times what I find is that kids will come in and they can tell me seven plus eight equals 15, but they couldn't draw it or they couldn't do it physically with something, which means they have memorized that math fact, which is totally fine, but I need them to understand what they're doing or it doesn't matter. Does it matter if they can memorize it? They have to really understand what that is. So we use two, um, we use two tools. I use two big tools um, when, we're, when we're composing and decomposing. Um, one of the tools I use is a part, part, whole board. This can be done on anything at your house, literally anything. I, this is the back of a cookie sheet. I drew on it with a whiteboard marker. And guys, look, you can erase, actually, with a whiteboard marker on a cookie sheet. I have a couple of craft or school designated cookie sheets that you do not get cooked with. Um, so, because one time I ruined a really nice pan, so now I have some designated cookie sheets. <laughs> for school. So use a cookie sheet and just, I literally just drew a line across the middle and then drew a line. So this is what we call a part, part, whole board. And it's a really great thing when you're using objects and pictures to understand composing and decomposing. This is the way we use it for composing. This is the way we use it for decomposing. It's amazing. Um, we actually did send this or talked about this, this, this objective. Our kids are doing it this week, getting really precious pictures of it. Um, but when we're using this, you can do it on a paper plate, like just draw a line across a paper plate. That's a really great thing to use. Um, this is great because it has magnets. So like when we're using this, I'm saying part, part, whole. So I'm saying I have two in this part. I have two over here. So I have one part is two, one part is two. And then I'm gonna move them down. Ooh. To, to our whole, two plus two equals four. So they can visually understand that I have two, there's two here, and we're going to move them together to make four. Same thing, just with subtraction. I have four hearts and I take one away. How many do I have left? Look, I have, it's kind of hard to do, but these are so big. I have three. Okay, so it's the same thing. 
the reason we do it with objects is because it really that is how they that is how they understand these concepts so having them physically move them that's the way to do it that's the way to understand you want to make really big numbers do it use rice use beans use cereal use whatever you want to use um i have i have we have so many Hatchimals. So this is what we've, we've been using as Hatchimals um, because the kids like them or Legos or cars or whatever you want to use, that's what I would use. Another tool that we use is called a number bond to explain the same thing. So it's the, it's the exact same thing, part, part, whole. So we have part, part, and they come together to make a whole. And it's the same thing with subtraction where we have a whole and then we move one part here and the other part here. So we can tell that we're taking a number and we're breaking it. We're not even, you don't even need to use numbers right now. Just use objects. Just use, I have, let's do it this way. Ah, okay, well, this one I would do, this, I'll just have to show you pictures. If I'm doing, if I'm doing subtraction, I would say I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five dots. I take two away. How many do I have left? One, two, three. I have three left. Okay, same thing. I have I have two dots. I have three dots. How many do I have all together? One, two. One, two, three. All together I have five. Okay, so that would be moving into pictorial. There are so many adding, subtracting, composing, decomposing resources that I'll be linking down here. Um, really and truly at your houses, I would just use what you have a lot of and around you. I've got, I've got Easter eggs right now. So I have two Easter eggs. My sister has, my sister found three Easter eggs. How many Easter eggs do we have all together? Oh, look, five. Um, if your kid is ready for simples, if your kid is ready to do it with numbers, do it. Do it, but really make sure they're understanding that you have a part, you have a part, you're putting them together to make a whole. You have whole for decomposing and you're breaking it apart. You're breaking it into two parts. So memorizing number facts is totally fine, but they have to understand what they're doing. You can't just memorize the number facts. You have to understand the function, like what is actually happening. Okay, word problems. Now, once my kids have a pretty good understanding of this. Once they really understand with composing, we're taking two parts and we're coming together to make a whole. Decomposing, we're taking a whole and we're breaking it into parts. Once we really understand this and we've moved past concrete and pictorial and we're starting to translate all of that and we're starting to translate all of that into the abstract. So we're gonna say two plus three equals five and we're creating and writing number sentences so like that's happening this is happening now so like we've worked all year and we're really understanding that this is like we read it like a sentence two plus three equals five this is we've moved into abstract then i start working on num the word problems so in word problems that's where it, word problems can be really tricky for especially because it's it's moving into the abstract. So I have, which is why, which is why we use concrete for everything. I have two Easter eggs. My sister has three Easter eggs. How many Easter eggs do we have all together? So when I'm teaching word problems, a lot of it has to do with vocabulary. So I'm working on getting, I'm, we're listening to, to what, what the direction is. Are we going to be adding? Are we going to be subtracting? Are we going to be composing a number? Are we decomposing a number? Um, I'm, we're listening for vocabulary, vocabulary like in all, all together. Um, what's the sum? Both. How many do they both have? With decomposing or subtraction, we're listening for have left, take, take away, fewer, how many more, what's the difference? Those are the words that we're listening for um, to tell us what to do. I am still, even when we're using, even if we're, we've done concrete, we've done concrete, we're into pictorial, we're writing number sentences. I am still, when we're doing a word problem, a lot of times we're acting it out with our bodies. We're using objects at our table to do, to do, I have two Easter eggs. My sister has four. How many do we have together? We're using things to 
to act out what the word problem is talking about. If we if we're ready to move on from that, then I might have all I not might I will have them draw pictures, even if we're not even if we're not using manipulatives. I might say, my I have two Easter eggs. My sister has three Easter eggs. How many Easter eggs do we have all together? We're gonna draw a picture of it. Then we write the number sentence. So when we're doing word problems, it's about identifying the vocabulary and figuring out exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Are we, do we have two parts and now we're gonna make a whole? Do we have a whole number and now we're breaking it into two parts? Um, identifying what we're going to do and then we use objects or pictures to help us solve that problem and finally write a number sentence. I hope that this makes sense. This is a pretty great and easy thing for you guys to do at home. You don't need any special things. Part, part, whole board, number bonds. Um, my biggest piece of advice would be don't just focus on memorizing fast, uh, math facts. I do I do think memorization is a real, like memorizing math facts, memorizing multiplication. I think there is a place in education for memorization. But in math, in kindergarten especially, I want to know, I want to send them off knowing that you fully understand that you are taking two smaller numbers and you are making a bigger number, that you are taking a large number and you are breaking it into smaller numbers. I want them to, I want to know that they know how to do that. And the way to teach that is to use objects. So use what you have at your house. You have lots of things at your house. You don't need anything fancy. I'll attach some different things to the bottom here, some different songs um, and videos about it and some different work, work things if you want to print and, and do that at your house go for it. I hope you're having a lovely day and hanging in there. It's kind of a dreary afternoon here, so I hope you're having a good day.